Today we'll be starting off with Spark. Apache Spark is just a programming language. It's a general purpose programming language. Uh, unlike Pig Hive, which are dependent on Hadoop, HDFS, right? So this Spark was developed in 2009. This is the history you can see open sourced in 2010. And as soon as it got open sourced, this was the biggest project and the famous project for Apache. And uh, yeah, these are a few contributors. And this is called to be an interactive tool. And it can work both on MapReduce and on general purpose, right? So that means your data can be sitting in HDFS or it can be sitting in your local system. And these are the features Spark famous or it became famous for its speed or it is known for its speed. It's built for speed in short time, but it is interactive. The computing does happen in memory and it happens on cluster systems, cluster nodes, distributed computing. Okay, so focuses on speed and scale. That's the major aspect of Spark. It can integrate directly with various data sources. It's not just on HDFS. It can be integrated very easily with a lot of other data sources. And it's called as distributed computing engine because the data will be sitting in different systems distributed across the cluster nodes. And the computing happens in memory. And yeah, it's called as unified stack. It, it's more like a complete package that you have. It's very easy to write codes in that. And uh, real-time analytics can be performed, machine learning can be performed, and language flexibility. It's called as polyglot because the Spark codes can be written in Scala, which we'll look into. You can write codes in Java. You can write codes in Python. And the recent edition was R. If you know any of these programming languages, you don't have to learn anything new. You can start off writing codes in Spark, right? That's the beauty of it. And yeah, you have built-in machine learning packages just like Python and R programming language. There are inbuilt libraries. You just have to call them and uh, your code is ready. Yeah, uh, as I said, it can be worked on various data sources, various modes. So you can install Spark on your system. Just like you use Java, you can use Spark also. It can work on top of Hadoop. It can work on other data sources as well. Uh, this is again the history. It is the source code is of 400,000 lines. Very active developer community. So in Apache, if you look at the most popular project, even today it is Spark. So a lot of people are contributing to this. And that's the reason I said going forward another two years max, MapReduce programming languages will be converted to Spark programming languages. Everybody will dive convert to Spark. And yeah, it's approximately equal to 100 years of effort Cocoa model and something. I'm sorry, don't bother about that. So yeah, this is the important point. Spark is said to have a speed of 10x when reading data from disk. Whereas the same speed increases to 100 times when you are doing an iterative job. What happens in uh, machine learning algorithms Machine learning codes, you have a lot of data and you're training your model, right? So that means the data is being called iteratively. So the first time when Spark calls the data, the data sits in the disk. So it has to first load it into the memory and then the execution happens. So that's where it takes 10 times, only 10 times. I mean, it is faster, but still it is very slow compared to the execution that happens in memory. Once the data is sitting in the memory, the iterative jobs that you're going to do are going to be definitely faster because there is no disk I.O. Right? Reading from memory is very fast, right? So that's the objective or that's the logic of Spark. It uses JVM, right? Java virtual machine. And each JVM can be configured with, of course, can have multiple threads. And each thread can do parallel processing, multiple tasks. So one JVM, multiple threads, under multiple threads, again, multiple tasks. Yeah, so let's see. Advantage of using Spark. So you can do a lot of parallel processing. 
the question is why we have to move to spark when we have so many other programming languages yeah so just explain all the map reduce concepts right that we have on adobe ecosystem the various programming tools they all have to be converted into map reduce codes so they have to pass back they have to compile and then the code has to be executed in map reduce form so there would be a lot of latency right that's not the problem with spark spark codes are directly executed they, they don't convert into map reduce that's the beauty so these are again features open source distributed and parallel in memory computation anyways we have seen that it can be used for iterative and interactive line by line you want to execute the code you can execute it or you want to do a machine learning algorithm where there is an iterative job you can use this one. any kind of code can be written remember spark is a general purpose programming language uh batch processing real time that can be done yeah i have explained right python scala and java and of course our programming language. and this spark just like your hadoop can be set up on commodity hardware the difference between hadoop setup and uh, the spark setup if you look at the hardware comparison in hadoop when you talk about the uh, the hardware parts you need to focus more on the memory part storage sorry memory not memory part storage part whereas for spark you need more memory because the computation is happening in memory right so that's the only difference but you can just connect multiple systems and uh, start working on it's fault tolerance we'll talk about fault tolerance because there is a concept called as rdd we will be able to achieve fault tolerance it is scalable just like plug and play that we feature that we have in hadoop plug more systems and start working on spark we are just increasing the nodes yeah so both everybody is now using it not just data engineers or data analysts but everybody using it unlike your hadoop which sits only on top of linux this can be installed in windows app. and yeah this is written in scala programming language which is very easy so till 2004 2013 when hadoop came into the market all this while people were very happy and they have utilized hadoop and map reduce concepts to the maximum extent but there were challenges as and how the data size increased the processing capabilities of map reduce codes were decreasing and at the same time you need to learn so many codes so many other dremel regal giraffe taze drill mahou tas4 so we don't even know a lot of names so we don't even know how to pronounce the names so many names are there so as an engineer if i ask you to work on some map reduce uh, functionality or some processing do you like to learn so many things for task 1 learn one thing task 2 learn another programming language task 3 another programming language you will get irritated right you don't have the same kind of zeal interest you will not be able to explore much on the programming language so that's the problem with map reduce programming languages now in 2014 you have spark and you will be able to achieve a lot of things just by learning spark you don't have to learn multiple things so this is another advantage that you have it's called as unified stack and if you see a lot of people have a misconception of spark is going to replace hadoop spark is not a replacement for hadoop it is a replacement for map reduce so compare hadoop versus spark in hadoop you have three components map reduce yarn and hdfs this is where data sits so data does not i mean spark does not compete with the storage logs it does not compete with resource manager as well it is a competition to the processing capabilities of hadoop so if i have to learn or write some query languages then you have hive and map reduce then spark you have spark sql capability my how to is for machine learning in map reduce here you have machine learning libraries strom kafka you know loom there are so many things for working on streaming data live data here we have spark stream 
it's a unified stack you don't have to learn so many things this is the comparison again with hadoop in hadoop you have storage and computing and both of them are taking the distributed capabilities or distributed framework capabilities